with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, uh, it's open time for public comment. Any comments from the public? Okay, with that, I will close public comment. <laughs> Uh, we have no presentations, nothing under the consent calendar, so we'll move to business items, 5A, Summer Playground 2019 final report. Um, our Summer Playground director uh, is running a few minutes late, so if we want to hold the item over to the next one, if that's all right with you, we can start with 5B. Okay. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and defer 5A. We'll move to 5B discussion and finalize process timelines and community meetings regarding t uh, town park master plan update. Hey, Shanat. Um Sorry, we can it, we can certainly go back to the summer playground item if you'd like, or we can move forward however you'd like. All right. Sure, um, so. All right. Let's move it back. Apologies. It's okay. That's okay. Are if we can go ready? back, to, yeah, we'll go back to five A summer playground final report. If you're good. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, everybody. Um, as you, I've introduced Shanat before, but to introduce you again, um, Shanat Rodriguez, our summer playground director for 2019, um, is here to do our summer playground wrap up for this year. Um, our staff report here, and then she has a presentation which I'll move forward for her. So, thank you, Shanat. Hello. Okay. It's on. <laughs> um, as he mentioned before, my name is Shanat Rodriguez, and I was this year's. Um, summer camp director. Um, so today I will be here to give you a recap and kind of give you a little bit more information slash a look into what camp looked like this summer. So first and foremost, our mission statement is to provide a safe and supportive environment where children are encouraged to explore new activities, meet new friends, and have a fantastic summer. A little look into our team. We were built of 32 full-time counselors, uh, always with a ratio of one counselor to eight kids. So that was always in place, whether that be on a field trip or at a daily activity or at a pool. Uh, we did our best to maintain that one to eight ratio. Um, the week before camp started, we did a whole training week which went into depth about going over expectations rules uh, cpr first aid and team building we had 12 returning team members of the 32 and of the 32 counselors nine of them were former cits so we do see um, a lot of familiar faces coming back Next up, we do have our daily structure. So I did have this in my first presentation back in the spring, and we did stick to it. Um, so what we're looking at is how the camp kind of runs um, from 7.30 in the morning to 6.30 in the afternoon. There are a little bit of changes depending on you know, the, a certain days, but this is really what it looked like. Um, the first hour was free play, um, where we just kind of had the kids come in, play, grab a ball, grab a counselor, really just kind of do whatever they like and then we had a morning lineup and our first morning block so that consisted of a game and art and a sport from 8 30 to 9 30 uh, followed by our morning snack uh, which we implemented this year uh, brand new we found that in the previous years we had a lot of kids that were taking breaks during activities grabbing water grabbing snack but um we found that it was a little bit distracting from the activities and it made it really hard for the uh, core leaders to run their activity. So we implemented um, a good 30 minutes out of our day to allow them to sit down, take a break, drink water and grab a snack. And then we followed it with our, la our second two morning block activities. Um, then we had lunch and our three blocks for afternoon, followed by afternoon snack, and we ended the day with free play. Um, I should note that n it's not noted in here, but we do also have a quiet time during the second block. That's where we kind of aimed it. Um, and during quiet time, it was a whole hour of just chilling out in the shade, um, grabbing a book, drawing something, just 
really relaxed during some of the hot, hottest time of the day. And that was always in the main hall or in a um, under the three trees. Um, just kind of depended on if we had the main hall available to us or not. Additionally, we did have an interactive power hour once a week. So this was usually on a Friday. And it was led by our sports or games leader, sometimes our art leader as well, but it typically was a game or a sport. And we did um, campers versus counselors and CATs, and the camp loved it. It was a whole camp, so I believe we did a game of basketball. Um, and um, kickball. Um, so it just kind of depended on what the staff was ready to do and ready to um, lead. And then we did have lineup between each activity. So that's when we announced theme days, um, field trips. We did camp songs. We did, um, you know, if we had lost and found, which we did a lot. Uh, we kind of would go over and be like, hey, whose jacket is this? And also dismiss for um, games and announce the, fol the, the following games and art and sports. So this year we did add a few things. Um, we had cooking and engineering, which was fantastic. Our staff had um, took some time to create activities and find recipes that were easy enough for them to lead as it was for the kids to understand and have hands-on experience. Uh, I do have some pictures later in the presentation and you'll see them at work. Uh, we implemented a lunch program, which we saw a lot of parents um, really took advantage of. And we had a lot of kids that sometimes uh, would show up without a lunch because they were gonna get picked up early but didn't get picked up early enough so that they like wouldn't have to sit through during lunch. So we would have um, kids come in and we had food to provide for them, which was really helpful. Um, morning snack I already talked about. We did do Harry Potter extravaganza, which was um, something that I took on during my time at Kids Club, my last year at Kids Club. I did it on a much smaller scale. It was very success successful, very fun. And so this summer I said, why not do it again, but much bigger? Um, and I do have more pictures of that and what that looked like, but it was really, really fun. Um, all of the staff trained on, on what, the, what that would mean. They all showed up in costume and they were ready to play the part. Um, it was really, really great to see summer playground transform into you know, and participate into the wonderful world of Harry Potter. Um, and additionally, we did have a shaded patio area this year, which was fantastic during really, really hot days and also during windy days. So we had shaded, but we also had kind of like a plastic wall barrier thing around it, uh, which really helped on windy days where art was not easy to do. So that's that was uh, what that looked like. This year we had um, donations from three wonderful organizations. We had the Lions Club donate uh, 1,200, the Corte de Madera Beautification Committee and the Corte de Madera Women's Club each donated $2,000, um, which we t then took that money and um, help and it, we used it for scholarships. So um, if I could have Mario. So, um, I did two different things and explained the distribution. So we gave local Corte de Madera and Larkspur families 50% um, off of the price, so 50% in scholarship. And any family that wasn't from Larkspur or Corte de Madera got the 30% um, scholarship that we provided. And then I gave you guys a residency breakdown. So five of the families were from Corte de Madera. Four of them were from Mill Valley, one from Sausalito, one from Novato, one from Greenbrae, and four from San Rafael. And so we saw a lot, we can see that a lot of them are coming from our local community, but also from Mill Valley and San Rafael. Attendance, so um, we broke down 
um, what camp really looked like, where these campers were coming from. Um, as you can see, a lot of them are coming from Corte Madera primarily. Uh, we see a lot of them from San Rafael, Mill Valley, a few from Larkspur, um, but most of them are coming from our own community, which is great. We do see some stragglers coming in from San Quentin, a few from San Francisco, um, Petaluma, Novato. Um, they're really all over the place, but most of them do come from our own um, community, which is wonderful. Uh, we totaled it out, and so that came out to 241 campers, and that just means full-time, weekly, drop-in, we totaled all that. Um, and then in total is, uh, of the weekly drop-in, we had 130 kids that signed up at some point during the summer. And to compare that, so we're comparing the number of 241 um, to the previous years down at the bottom, and that's um, in 2018 we had 176, in 2017, we had 152, 2016, 120, and 2015, 171. So we can see that the increase is there. We are getting more kids um, active in our program. So um, I have this in the report, um, but I did blow it up here for you guys to see um, and for me to be able to break it down because it might be a little bit misleading. Basically what I did is I went into our sign in and sign out and I broke down the numbers for every single day that we had data for. Um, so for Tuesday, out of the people that were signed up for full summer, uh, Tuesday of the week of uh, June 28th, we had 113 of them sh show up, and so on and so forth, Wednesday 102, and you can see that for every single week, all the way down to our last week. Unfortunately, we don't have some of the data for um, that first Monday, um, and for that last Wednesday, because uh, technology isn't always our friend, and we lost um, the, that data, but the Wednesday through Friday was only because uh, we were closed those three days. Um, and so then I averaged out what we would see on a weekly basis, and then the numbers at the bottom are the average for Mondays of the whole summer, Tuesdays of the whole summer. And then I averaged out um, on the last col column the average of all the weeks put together. So I hope that's a little bit straightforward. Um, and we'll see that again in our daily drop-in overview so we can see that uh, parents are really using us during the week of the 4th of July and then a little bit more again um, during the second to last and last week of camp when most camps are kind of winding down and we're getting ready to get back into um, the school game um, so those are the averages and then we have one more of weekly and so that we do see that we have a lot more need for weekly than daily, but both of them are being put in use. Um, I can see that our most, you know, kind of in the middle, July is when we tend to have peak numbers, and then we kind of start going down with an average of, you know, 15 on a weekly. But, you know, these are all just numbers from the whole summer. And then for expenditures, we spent $85,000 on our employees' compensation, so that's paying them for their hard time and dedication to our camp, um, and $21,000 for materials and supplies, which totals out to $106,000. And in comparison, um, as a recap, uh, in 2018, we made $145,266, and this year, I am excited to share that we made $147,719. And comparing our full-time registrations, this year we had 182 as compared to last year of 176. So our accomplishments were our field trips were either sold out or very, very close to sold out. All of our theme days were executed both on the uh, staff part but also the children's part. Um, our morning snack was implemented and worked out really great. We could really see an improvement in the, ch uh, the campers' behavior, their attitude. They had a little bit more energy. Um, our Harry Potter extravaganza, I do have pictures from that. And our cooking and engineering was fantastic. So for next summer, um, one of so, some of our goals are to rebrand our kind of marketing. We're looking into 
kind of looking again into our brochures, what they look like, maybe giving them um, a different look, lighter colors. Um, this year, this past year, I tried to bring out a lighter blue as compared to previous years. We have been using kind of a, a darker blue. Uh, we want to make it really light and fun. Um, we also want to revitalize our website for more information and easier navigation. I find that a lot of parents tell me that, uh, oh, like I didn't really understand how to do this on your website. Um, I, I also want to provide um, parents with little bios of our staff. Who are they leaving our kids, their kids with? Um, I think it would be wonderful. And just, again, back to navigating it a lot better. Um, and then we would like to fully incorporate our lunch program. It was pretty successful this summer, but I can see it um, growing to its full potential next summer by advertising it better, by fully incorporating it into either maybe our price, including it, or having an add-on price. Um, so we're looking into that. And these are just pictures of really what does summer camp look like? What does summer playground look like? Um, you can see that um, the kids are having a great time. We have our trip to our exploratorium. We have face paint from our penny carnival. The um, the kids are learning how to make like a bridge thing for their engineering. We have our kids who showed up for Stripes and Stars Day. Our staff, um, you know, showing up for Superhero Day. Um, that was my core staff and not my core staff. I'm sorry, um, my site coordinators and myself. Um, so we dressed up as the Powerpuff Girls, uh, which I found I'm pretty old because no one really understood what we were dressed up as and just a few more of our staff members just showing up on a daily basis wearing banana costumes, shark costumes, singing the banana song, singing the baby shark song. Um, and then I have one more slide. And then this is more of what Harry Potter looked like, uh, Harry Potter day. So we did a um, trip to Honey Dukes. We split them up. Every single camper got a house. Um, which is crazy because there was a lot of them. Uh, we split up our um, own team members, our counselors were split up into houses as well. And so they were expected to show up dressed up in their colors and dressed up for the part. What you are seeing in these three pictures, which are the best pictures that I had, um, we did potions. So we did color changing potions. Um, and that was so, so, so much fun. And they changed from blue to green to purple, all just by adding certain magic. Um, and so my, I led that with the help of a few other um, staff members. We had letters coming out from our fireplace. We had wanted wizard posters put up. We had Quidditch. We had um, safe duels. Uh, we had defense against the dark arts. The kids had a blast. Um, we had them sit down all in their halls. We had them um, you know, gain and lose points depending on participation and their behaviors. So we saw a really good um, turnout. So I believe that's the last one. And thank you. Thank, thank you, Shanat. Thank Any you questions? so much. Oh, I Any have a quick question. question. Mm -hmm. So first of all, thank thank you for the presentation and congratulations because it seems like that was a, just a really good summer and you guys have been trending in such a positive direction. Um, so your total expenses were only 106, which looks like you had a profit of forty thousand dollars for the summer. Yes, I think that's the first year there's been a profit. So I'm just curious because I know for a while it was losing money. So I'm just curious, like, did you really cut your expenses back, or how did you get to that level of profit? Um, you know what? I really think that it had to do a lot with just knowing where to put the money into. So um, I put a lot of the money into. Um, we we did our best to start the year with what we had last year, what we've had from previous years, what we could absorb from Kids Club in regards to art, to games and sports, which really helped us for about a good chunk of the summer. And then it wasn't until about halfway through the summer that we had to pick up more um, art supplies. Mm -hmm. So that's what where a lot of the money usually went to. Um, also in comparison to, lot, to the previous years, I know some directors put a lot of money into um, some stuff that was not really necessary for the camp. Um, so I, I know that in the past they had like, um, I don't know, giant hamster balls for staff or some, something crazy for staff. And while I did, a staff appreciation was number one on, on my list. I found other ways to make it more affordable. We had them come in for dinner. We had a dinner hosted by one of our site coordinators. Um, so we did, we found other alternatives to spending a grand amount of money. 
Um, well, congratulations. I'm, I'm really impressed. Thank you. Because it was losing money, a lot of money for years. So Thank you. Yeah, and you have the numbers behind it. Any other questions, comments? Um, just a comment. My girls had a great time there. But this is uh, feedback I got from another parent whose son went not this summer, but the summer before. Mm -hmm. And he was going into between kindergarten and first grade and loved sports. So when he would try to play all of the sports, he kind of got roughed up and picked on by the older mm -hmm. boys because the older boys tend to gravitate towards that. So I don't know if you guys have ever given any thought to separating out sports by age. By age. So that the younger kids could participate mm -hmm. and be a little bit buffered from the older boys who tend to be pretty rough. Yeah, I have actually given it thought into um, kind of separating the age because it is a concern of many parents, not just that. Um, the problem is that sometimes the groups are too small. So sometimes it's only um, a few, like as a whole, Sometimes sports is really small and it's a group of 12 altogether and then let alone only like two or three um, of them are younger kids. So it's hard to run a certain activity with just three kids here and three kids there. I am trying to rack my brain and come up with better ways to execute the age difference because I hear your parents loud and clear. However, um, this summer it wasn't too bad. Um, our staff is trained on looking out for that kind of stuff, and I definitely don't tolerate any bullying of any kind. So if it's ever picked up on, they definitely come and talk to me, and I talk to their parent immediately. Um, it's just a no tolerance on my part. But thank you, and I appreciate your um, feedback. Any other comments, questions? No? Thanks. Just one, one oh, go ahead. Um, I really appreciate what you're doing, and I uh, spent quite a bit of time walking down there with my dogs now that the dogs are allowed in the park. Um, and I saw a lot of really happy kids doing really great, fun things, and it made me feel so good to. Sorry? Use your mic. Turn your mic on. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> it made me feel really good to see so many happy kids. The one thing that um, I wondered about was whether there was enough shade. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of times when there were kids trying to rest on their backpacks and they were kind of out in the sun. So do we have some of those pop-up tents you can use on the hot sunny days to give kids more outside shade or do they... Um, I want to say that we do, um, but that then it goes again goes back to our shaded patio area, which we used a lot. Um, when it was hot and we did get a week that it was just crazy, crazy, crazy hot, we moved them all inside into the AC, played a movie. So we are really conscious about whether, is it too hot for them to be out here? We brought out water coolers. We had, um, one of my favorite memories this summer was on a really, really crazy hot day, we all just got soaked. We played water games, we brought out the hose, we got wet, the counselors got wet, the kids got wet, they took turns throwing water at each other. It, and so we, we do our best, and me as, camp, as, as um, director, my one of my youngest siblings goes to this camp, so it's obviously like, is it too hot for her? Is it too hot for everyone? I'm always keeping that in, in mind. And if I can move them into a shaded area, I definitely do. And if I can't, I find another alternative to cool them down. I think the water plays a great idea. More slip and slides. <laughs> <laughs> and Pat, I don't know if you saw it, but the, the back patio, they actually, they tented the whole thing. The whole thing. It wasn't little pop-ups. Yeah. It's not it a whole thing. It, it gets kind of stuffy back in mm -hmm. there, so I don't know. Well, I, I, I take it into, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. I hear you loud and clear, um, but I don't think that was, there was too much um, complaint about the um, the heat. We we had water coolers with ice, um, and again, the water play and bringing them into the main hall, we did our best. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. I, had, oh. just, I just oh, went, God. sorry. Um, my kids are too young for summer playground, but um, so they've, they've attended camps at some other um, communities that do some younger kids, but I think there was one thing, um, piece of safety that actually came through from some of these camps that wasn't at all, which was the teacher t-shirts where all the campers are wearing the same t-shirt mm -hmm. every day and all the counselors are in a t-shirt. And I think just being that we're in this big public park, um, for parents of the younger kids, it might be something to think about that <laughs> that creates this nice safety to know like you're part of the camp, you're not. Mm -hmm. um, and they did different color t-shirts by kind of age group as a way to kind of visually demarcate. So just mm -hmm. as a no, I have definitely taken it um, into consideration. I'm actually looking into giving um, 
maybe perhaps doing something where every single camper uh, gets one or just even um, Brian had suggested, oh, why don't you create one for campers that parents could have the option of buying? So I definitely will look into that and see how that kind of plays into um, what uh, we're doing for next year. But I think it would be a great idea. I think there's nothing more camp than like a camp shirt shirt. to have as a memory. So yeah. I have more than I need right now, but at the time (laughs) it was super helpful. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Anybody else? Can I just ask one more question? Go ahead. (laughs) Mm-hmm. pushing for no plastic water bottles and all those kinds of things. How, how is that aspect of the program? So I am a really big green person. I do my best to, um, you know, stay away from plastic stuff. Um, I am trying to think of alternative ways because in the past we have just used well we use a water fountain um for the most part but sometimes um the water fountain were wasn't working because of a pipe thing and so we would have to break out um the plastic cups or the paper cups um in the past we did use water bottles like that we provided for every camper however the problem there is that um kids have get distracted having fun um, and they lose their water bottles and they lose their jackets and what have you. Um, so it, it's it's a work in progress. I would like to find um, an alternative to using paper cl- cups. We did, um, sometimes we will write their names on it and be like, hey, look, if you, if you lose this, you're gonna have to walk to the water fountain not getting any of the, you know, our cold water. So we try to encourage them to bring their own water bottle to, you know, I tell parents all the time, water bottle, hat, sunscreen, and a lunch is your, like, has to be on your list every day. Um, but yeah, I encourage water bottles the most that I can. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Fred, if I might, I just wanna, wanna uh, thank Shanat um, in front of the commission. Really appreciate all the hard work you did this year. Um, the kids had a great time, this is really, the last two years have seen incredible growth in Summer Playground. I think um, the support with uh, with the commission and, and ideas and, and development of programming, um, along with our town manager, who's been very supportive of, of seeing this program grow. So great job. Really appreciate all the hard work. Um, you'll be happy to know that um, Shanat will be here for the 2020 Summer Playground year um, with her um, other two um, right-hand women who helped her out a lot this year, and they've already... Yeah. They worked hard on this um, presentation to talk to you guys as well, but they'll be starting their uh, brainstorming planning process and, and reaching out to the, the staff from this past year to move forward for next year. So great job, congratulations. Thank um, you. Really impressive uh, revenue figures and expenditure figures um, as compared to the last year and more so even than the year before that. So thank you very much and um, we look forward to another great summer. Thank, so, you. thank you and I did just wanna do say one thing, um, as he mentioned, I mean, I'm the one standing up here giving the presentation, but I tell my staff this all the time. I really wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for my staff, for my team, um, specifically those that are site coordinators working behind the scenes. I had a lot of help from Alexandra Duran, who um, is my go-to girl. Um, Alexandra Peretz, um, they've, uh, Alexandra and I, Alexandra Duran and I started together, interviewed together, started counselor, started this job together. Um, Alexandra Peretz um, came in a few years later, worked Kids Club. They were fantastic help. And on top of that, we had a wonderful, wonderful set of staff um, who for the most part, most of them are coming back. They're very, they were really happy working this summer, which is great. Um, and our CITs, our CITs are so, so, so important to our program. So, you know, it's not just me. It doesn't, it's not just one person. It's every single person that worked with us this summer. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. Shana. Any comments from the public? Okay, I'll close public comment. Uh, we'll move to 5B discussion and finalized process, timeline, and community meeting regarding town park master plan update. Great, thank you, Fred. Um, so, as part of the staff report, um, let me blow this up a little bit. Um, worked on some feedback from um, the commission meeting from um, last month, as well as conversations with the executive advisory committee. Um, put together a, a 
rough draft outline for what we're looking at doing. Um, uh, Commissioner Ravazio and I had the chance to catch up last week and just talked about some community workshop dates. Um, so those are proposed there as tentative dates. Um, but certainly looking for uh, direction from, from the group, the commission, um, uh, certainly Commissioner Phipps and Ravazio who have been working um, together on, on looking at, you know, really, really digging into the master plan, the 2007 master plan. Um, so we'd love to discuss any points. And this is, again, a draft. We're looking at feedback from the commission, how to, um, any points that we're missing, any, any uh, draft timeline dates that we'd like to look at if the draft timeline seems reasonable, um, if there's something that we're missing in there. Um, and be happy to to kind of discuss thought process and anything there that um, the commission may wish. Okay, before we turn it over to Commission Pat, do you and Eileen just want to give a little additional input on the process you guys have gone through? Yeah, we've high, high level to, overview. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> Thanks. We're trying to stay just one step ahead of you guys. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, just for <laughs> clarification, Pat and Eileen have taken the lead on this um, from the commission for the commission. Go ahead. Um, so, Mario, I know I said we would be ready by October 3rd, but after taking the next step and looking at what we wanted to actually accomplish in those uh, community workshops, it made me think that we should make our first one the 19th. Hey, Pat, make sure oh, you're I'm just, so that's okay, you just need to get a little bit closer, make sure it's on, thanks. Um, I think we should make the, I don't, I don't think we can be, we want to do a really good job, and we're, I'm thinking that we, in, in order to press it to October 3rd. is broken, oh. I think. Wait. Turn it it's on? a conspiracy oh. just it's to keep me off. The no, no, road. never. It's okay. Oh, there, you there you go. go. Okay, so sorry. Okay. So sorry. <laughs> TV land, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so if we can maybe consider just slowing things down enough so that October 19th would be our first uh, workshop, uh, I think that we will be able to be better prepared. Uh, I did just take a couple of, like, uh, I, I, an attempt at the structure of how we would actually run these meetings and it's based loosely on the what the bicycle pedestrian uh, advisory board did when they wanted they did this big broad range thing where they said what parts of town need help when it comes to pedestrian and bicycle safety and the pe people came in and we had big maps that we put on the round tables they, we actually did it in here it was too crowded I think at the community center would be better. And we had big maps of, they had the whole town, but I would see us having, at first, just a map of just town park. And then divide up into groups and people go off and, and, and the smaller groups work on the questions they're given. Where do we need restrooms? Where do we need certain things? Do we need these certain things? Are there adequate facilities? What else would we like to see in the park? What do we not want to see in the park? We know there's a big contingent that wants a swimming pool and it comes up every time and we really just have to hear them out. And, um, and you know, I don't know where you guys stand on the pool, but we went all the way through it in the 90s and it was like, just didn't look like it was going to happen. But I mean, you know, we, we want to be totally open to what the community input is because that's kind of the goal. I, I just called it. Uh, the community wish list, you know, what what do you want to see for uh, Town Park? So we do that first and people the groups come back and they sort of present are we think the priority should be this We want to see this fixed. We want to see this better We want more of this less of this whatever the groups want to present and then those those uh, Maps go up on the wall and then we do the same thing again with just the map of Park Madera Center because um, Todd's agreed or we've heard from them that it's okay for us to incorporate the Park Madera Center as part of Town Park so we can actually do this whole a, a second visioning session where we're asking them what do you want to see at Park Madera Center do we want the pet club to last there forever do we want to see senior housing do we want to see a supermarket there used to be the pet club used to be a little supermarket where you could stop and get produce and meat and eggs and you know like the Twin Cities market maybe um, and so basically we're just collecting all this input and doing the same thing again where people go off together they talk they come in their group does a little presentation we put it up on the wall and then what um, bike put bike didn't do this so I'm copying somebody else here and I can't remember who it was at the end of the meeting everybody gets a certain number of little post-it votes 
And there's upvotes and downvotes, like green is, I want to see this go, and red is, I don't want to see this stop. And they just walk around the room and they just put their stickers on the ideas. And so at the end, you can say, wow, that idea was popular. Wow, that idea is polarizing. Wow, here's a whole bunch of ideas that people don't really care about. And you can kind of start to see what the priorities are of the community. And the, what concerns me a little bit about where this goes after that is, I really want to re make sure we talk a lot about an online survey before we do it because in the past we haven't been able to control whether people visit that survey one time or a hundred times. And so if we get like real advocates of a, of a swimming pool complex or something, we could undo, I mean, when we do these workshops, we've got people who are real stakeholders. They're coming in, they're showing up, they're giving their time and they're, and, and to undo that because you do a community survey that says, oh, just kidding, everybody, if you look at the numbers, you look at the statistics, people want mm -hmm. something different. So I'm just a little concerned about that. We should just make sure we have a way, I don't know if the new surveys have a way of, I mean, even if, even if it's only one email address. I, I think we can figure that off. Okay, all right, details, details. Yeah, and we then, just need to get to the meat. <laughs> and then the only other thing that I would say is, I think it, I think that, process is drawn out a little too long. I don't think we should take this long because what would be really great is to wrap up our drawing in, getting everybody's input by, uh, like you say, um, December. I don't know that we need to, to go to stake. I don't know that we need to like go and see the women's club, even though we're on their agenda, actually. I'm October 8th, I'm going to be talking just to their board about this process. But, and, and inviting them in, because to me, they're our elders. They're the people who really should serve as guardians of the parks and you know really get involved. And they're flattered when you tell them that. So, But I think by early in the year, we should be able to like come up with recommendations, uh, to come up with a draft of the update to the vision plan so that what we see as really high priority projects can be budgeted in next year's fiscal budget, not waiting a whole nother year. Right, because if we only are coming up with presentation in May, we're we're probably not soon enough to get anything budgeted for the following fiscal year, right? And it just starts to stress out the process so much that uh, I think we're going to have to look at that's because all. That's, it, that was it's, it. I think it's a combination. It's budget plus what Public Works can take on. Right. So I and think and Park think, and Rec resources. And Park and Rec. Yes, yeah, so I think it's a it's a combination of all three. Right. Um, so yeah. So. I mean, just, just my thoughts, I, you know, whatever. No, I appreciate it. Do you have anything? Um, I, I just, um, I was, we've been talking about, you know, just making sure that we incorporate what still works from the master plan and, you know, to not just throw it all out and start anew, but to um, look at that. And um, I think some of it is still relevant now and important. And so, and then freshen it up with, community input and we could use one more person on our little team if that's allowed is that a brown act thing no we're good with that but hold on hold that thought <laughs> let me go ahead and open up the commission others for comments input um i th i like the the process that's running i think that that makes a lot of sense is a good way to, to work a, a, a big group. I would advocate that we also do an online survey and that we don't shortchange that process just for folks who don't have the time and bandwidth to be able to attend kind of a long workshop like that. Um, I think that, that is important to make sure we give people multiple avenues to give feedback. Anybody else? Uh, I had a couple of comments. If maybe we can move the, what do you mean? Two things, a couple of things. Um, the one on the 19th, if we can move it back one week, if that's possible. And then the other thing is, I think, we're, are we scheduled to do two community meetings or just one? I think you should do okay. two because you need one it, during the day on a Saturday and one at the night. Okay, time. then I would suggest if we do one at the community center, we do the other one at Cove School on the east side. Oh, okay. Um, we did it. For Skunk Hollow. We, we did it for Skunk Hollow and it worked out really well. I think we did a Saturday one over there. I'm just throwing Even though that it's out. just for Town Park. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Even though it's just for Town Park. Yep. We're not going to be talking about no, their you, parks, or are we? No. you got to remember, though, that it's, it's quarter meter has a whole. It's right. not just right. this side. Oh, that's fine. It's, that's cool. it's inclusive. Um, the other thing is we may need to look relook at the 
timeline you have, only because I don't know what strain there is on staff resources. And the other thing is we still have to cycle this stuff through our commission meetings. Through the council meetings? No, through our commission through meetings. Through commission meetings, yeah. So where it goes like draft, you know, draft to town council, that would have to cycle through us for stuff like right. that. So right. you just need to factor that in. Um, and then one other thing I was thinking about also, the thing with the music barn, oh, yeah. I haven't been in that space in a long time. I don't know how big it is, but I think we should try and look at that space to see if we can turn it into flex space. And, by, and again, I'm not a contractor, by flex space is on the plaza side. I don't know if we can put like a roll up garage door. So during the summer when that is not being used for music, right, you close the garage door, it can be used by park and rec, the energy. Mm -hmm. It's more of a flex space that can be used for multi purpose versus just going, it's a music barn and it's only used during the summer. Right. If they, again, there's probably a cost involved with that. Yeah. We I just want to get that, that out there. We should put that whole discussion on the agenda and maybe even plan to do a tour over there but what what you should know is that what's happening is that cafe verde when they uh, took on the lease at their current location negotiated for an option to lease that barn and so what they want to do is exercise that option but they're totally willing to make it a community facility right and you don't have to buy it'll be more like town park plaza in that you don't have to buy something in order to go in there. Right, you right. To, you don't have to sit down and eat a meal or buy a drink in order to be in there. We can do community events. Liza Matthews wants to do her uh, Wizard of Oz show, you know, because there'll be a stage right. and so forth. Um, it's just, I was thinking, if we can use it, I call it flex space, it where is, it just, yeah. we it's just a, don't cut a hole community. in there and it's like an open type thing. Again, I don't, I'm just getting ahead right, of it. No, no, what he's planning is uh, the same kind of glass open door wall okay. for the barn. That It's not actually going to look much like a barn because he wants it to be acoustically. It. <laughs> he wants it to be a good acoustic building, so he just wants to put in those um, the big sliding glass doors. But that means you will be able to open it straight out onto the patio for, for bigger events. Okay. And Pat, what's his timing on that? Do you, oh, do you know? he wanted it done three years ago. Right. And every time I see him, he asks me for an update. And the question I see now, if we can, well, maybe I'll wait for the dog park thing because the new parking that's proposed, which I love, that's so great, um, that was where we were going to put in some storage containers to hold the stuff that's in the music barn that we need to move out. So we just need to plan how to, where yeah. that's gonna go, if okay. it's not gonna go there. Okay. And then, is that music well, barn, is that park. him paying the cost to upgrade all that, or is that the town? Well, he wants help from the community because he put $400,000 of his own money into the tenant improvements of Cafe Verde. And he got a very generous lease in, in, in exchange for that. But he is hoping that the community can raise some money. And I have a couple of gals who are chomping at the bit to get going and do selling tiles on the dance floor or something like that to help fund the improvements. Because they're not going to be that high. So he's thinking like 150000 okay, for the whole thing. So Okay. okay. All right. Uh, any other comments? Then it sounds like next steps are probably just maybe refining the timeline a little. And then I don't know... Um, Again, yeah, if we can move the if we can move the nineteenth back, or just take a look at it again and see if you think it's going to work, or if it's too tight. Yeah, it's, Mar it's Mario's schedule that we had to figure out. For so yeah, the, the dates, um, if I may, Fred, um, the dates that Pat and I looked at were were uh, Thursdays, I believe, is what we kind of were looking at for the evening one, and then evening, and then Saturdays. Saturday. So that's the first Saturday after Oktoberfest that's available. Okay. Um, the week before is Oktoberfest, so the twelfth. Um, and then I think the next one that was maybe available was the Saturday after, which was the 26th. So, um, but again, we ha I, I, we didn't look at the cove. I haven't contacted the school district. So if that's an angle they want to look at, um, then we can certainly do that as well. Yeah, I think we um, should. But, uh, but happy to, uh, like I said, this is a draft timeline. I, I sketched it out, you know, looking at the commission's schedule as well as um, how we would approach uh, individual groups and then you know the planning commission and others so uh, happy to refine it tighten it up it's no problem just uh, it was just a, a draft so I guess so. question is is the timeline realistic for staff that's right because I don't want to do the thing where we go this is realistic and then you know all of a sudden what we're supposed to be doing in March turns into May and what we're supposed to be doing in May turns into August well so um, 
This is this is a, a commission, you know, driven project. I'm, and staff is happy to assist in any any way. I think the way that um, that we're looking at it is in terms of of the commission really uh, having those conversations with the community and and just like we did with Skunkala, really um, get the feedback from it. So staff will be there to. Um, Get, help gather the information and, and execute surveys and, and finalize all that through the commission. Um, but in terms of the, the community outreach and um, preparing stuff for the planning commission and the council, that would certainly be stuff that we would work on. But I would be looking for the um, a, a large amount of help from the commission to do those community outreach meetings um, and also, you know, reviewing the surveys and if we're going to do an online survey or not, you know, how that works right. and make sure that we're were covering everything that the commission would like covered. So I guess from Pat and Eileen, is this realistic then? Yeah, I mean, okay. you're right. I wasn't when I say realistic, about, I mean like I wasn't realistic slash time. doable. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm definitely willing to help with writing up the, you know, when we have to synthesize everything from the first meeting to present it to the second meeting, I can help do that. I can, we can work on that. Too. And I think that we have a pretty good roadmap for what we, for what, I mean, we have the entire process of what happened for the 2007 master plan. And I'm not saying that we need to, there's no need to reinvent the wheel, obviously. So we, we can use a lot of those, um, the best practices from that or things that we didn't like, the commission didn't like, um, and, and move forward in a pretty expeditious manner. Um, I think, um, you know, to Commissioner Ravazio's point in terms of reaching out to the stakeholders, I think, you know, we're talking about um, maybe, and, and I certainly don't, don't mean to, to call it a long drawn out process, but I think, you know, doing updates to say, hey, look, this is the summary of what we have. Let's, let's make three bullet points of how to update it, you know, based on, you know, the, the areas of focus on that we're looking at. So I think that there's, um, it, it can, it can happen reasonably quickly with, um, not starting from ground zero. I think that's, so I think having this as an update as opposed to remaking the entire master plan, which right. is, it, it, I think is, is going to help speed this along okay. quite a bit. Again, I just want to make sure that it's realistic and it's doable, which it sounds like it is. We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> we'll work hard to make it make it work. Yeah. With that, I'll open up to public comment. Hello, my name is Jim Andrews. Uh, let me see. In terms of in terms of Park Madeira Center, I'm hoping you guys remember that it is currently heavily mortgaged. And we have been able to restructure the uh, mortgage bond so that it's cash flow break even now. So we aren't having to subsidize it from the general fund. So in terms of the ultimate lease on the gas station, that's 2037. Okay. Uh, I believe the other uh, uh, buildings, it's like 20, I think 2028 or thereabouts. I'm doing this from memory. So, you know sort of doing the plan will be sort of like, where do we want it to be in a decade, not any time in the super near future. Right. Uh, the other thing is, remember, we don't own the northeast quadrant of the park. That belongs to the school district. So, yep. uh, you know, if we suddenly have a big influx of children and they have to build schools, uh, we might not have as big a park as we're used to. But anyway, thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, thanks Jim. Anybody else? Okay, with that, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Fred, if I uh, just real quick, um, if I may, um, with with uh, permission, we um, I can I can meet with uh, Commissioner Phipps and Ravazio about establishing um, or finalizing this um, timeline more, and then bring that to the Executive Advisory Committee. Okay. Um, or if we want to meet together, how we can we can do that appropriately. Um, be happy to do that. Okay. In, in the next, I, I mean, I'd like to in the next week, week and a half or so, if possible. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, with that, we will move to uh, 5C. Uh, I'm just going to sum her up by saying dog park. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. And I, I, I want to um, um, apologize for not being able to be at our August meeting, but um, and I, I thank uh, our town manager, Todd Cusimano, and, and Rebecca um, Fawn, who um, really helped out a great deal with this and, and I know helped uh, visualize a lot of this last week. And, and uh, Commissioner Blomgren, I really appreciate your, your help on, on those drawings. I think they were really um, impactful. So um, the 
we're looking for you know, final review and recommendation from the commission to bring to council next week. Um, staff wants to make sure that uh, the, commi the commission is satisfied with um, the background, the conversation, the input, um, if, if everything that we've um, received from the public, you know, you feel has been heard. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, the drawings that we have in terms of the five different options that are available um, and how that can be phased. Um, want to make sure that we're, you know, having a good positive discussion amongst the commission and that you feel that um, it, it's a good uh, summary of what has happened um, most recently but also over the past couple of years as well. So uh, we are obviously I'm talking about the area for consideration is just north of the Park Madera Center along the fence line. Um, you can see the outline there. It's a bit of a funny shape but um, it's good, good flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, some great aerial uh, Google satellite photos with um, those boundaries and um, just to orient everybody in terms of the existing fence and uh, where the green waste um, dumpster is and the garbage area um, you know as we talked about there's uh, or as you talked about there's consideration for some additional parking spaces um, the division of the uh, park into a big dog park and a small dog park um, with access from the Park Madera Center via pathway that we would uh, improve. Um, so uh, really exciting. I think this is definitely, um, from the original vision, I think this is just a real positive direction that I think that, that this is going to be a really attractive feature and, and has gotten nothing but positive feedback from the public that I've gotten voicemails and, and emails from. Um, so I look forward to answering whatever questions I can and, and also um, want to make sure that we're uh, at, a, at a comfortable point that the commission um, can ultimately make the recommendation to council. So I'll open it up to the commission for comments, input. Um, just to kind of go back to what we talked about when we walked it with Todd, in order to do the parking spaces, we're going to have to take out a line of trees, correct? Um, An existing line of trees? Yes. There are a few trees that would need to come out. I think we, when, we, when I walked it with Todd this um, last week and looked at how many, I, th I want to say the total is three. It, I, that may not be accurate. But um, if you just very, so if I'm, the, the concrete ends right about there. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, you know, there's certainly some trees that could very easily come out, um, and there's probably some more significant ones that we'd want to leave. So, um, you know, whether it's 16 spaces or 18 spaces, I think, um, you know, we we would look at a at a final, um, you know, some schematics for it. But uh, but yes, there would be a couple of trees that would that would be removed. And I think um, also the the trees where the small dog park would be. There's um, a lot of bushes growing up under them that we talked about taking out. And I'm just envisioning if I'm in the park and we're used to looking at that wall of green there, and now all of a sudden we're seeing a fence and cars parked on the other side, I think we should really think about replanting up against one side or the other of the fence so that you're not in the park looking at a parking lot right there all of a sudden with a fence. So you mean on the south side of the fence on this, on this area over here? Uh, I, I don't know what would make the most, most sense, sense. Okay. and have the least impact but and the trees any I'm a big fan of any trees along a parking lot because it helps to cool everything but just to main because that corner of the park is really kind of like wooded and green and lush as it is and I would hate for it to turn into a fence and a parked car on the other side mm -hmm. so just whatever we take out to be mindful about how can we replant it to to keep it looking nice like it is now Mario, aren't the parking spaces going to be a phase two, though? Yeah, that, so that's like so the second. I mean, that's not the first round. Of no, yeah, this is certainly what you're. What this um, this rendering shows would be phases one through four. So, you know, so, sort so, of completed. So I guess the question: Can you break down what's in which phase? Sir, so, um, so in terms of how we look at this entire space here, um, I think we looked. At, here's the 
things we want to consider. Um, okay, that's enormous. So, uh, first of all, the the whole space as a whole. So, as one dog park, as two. Um, you know, the way that the fencing can be done in, in a way that we could f plan for the future of having two dog parks as opposed to one. Um, that consideration for that. Um, the pathway. Um, so, so one dog park phase one, two dark parks phase two, pathway two and a half phase three, um, additional parking spaces phase four. Um, and when I say original, you know, one dog park with amenities, of course, um, you know, some water fountains and, and benches and tables as well for the public. Um, there is uh, a few more things to consider on the smaller side just based on um, the things Commissioner Elson mentioned, which are, you know, the amount of brush that's there. So there'd be a lot of needing to thin that out and, and possibly remove things. Um, and then, you know, whether the, um, as the commission discussed, whether the, the park itself extends to the fence line um, that it currently exists or is, you know, 10 feet in one direction or the other. Um, and then, of course, obviously, we talked about the, um, the fence line being uh, approximately three feet from the current pathway along the park as opposed to right up against it. Yeah, because it's three feet I don't enough. I know that three feet no, enough. Okay. We talked about, I, Fred and I are more in favor of fencing at the top before it starts sloping. Sure, yeah, yeah. That's some, that, can't, we can't that's tell more than drawing. three feet, though. No, absolutely. I'm, 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 three, I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay. The, three feet's yeah. a, a, an arbitrary number, but okay. um, I mean, there's some distance from the, the pathway so that it's. Um, There's a more it's safe as well buffer. as right. yeah as a buffer just from the, the pathway itself. Okay. Okay. So for phase one, uh, where how do you access the dog park? If the path the path won't be there, right? So. So phase one would be. Um, so orange from from orange the park, line. The basically. orange line. So accessing orange. the dog park from this from this corner. So this. You, so you won't be able to access it from uh, park, 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 park Madeira only only from the other side for phase one. I think that the goal is to have access from Park Madera Center as part of it, but it's it, Just it's, it sort of remains to be seen what how much um, is necessary to, to recreate that pathway. But the intention would be to to do as best we can to get to that that path in place. I think I would rather get to the path sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think I, and I think I, I think, think Public Works is fairly confident that they can do that. Okay, because I think before we start putting in two dog parks, I think there needs to be access into the park sure because mm -hmm. otherwise again you know people keep saying everybody's going to walk to it there's a whole east side of town there's people up christmas tree hill up chapman that aren't going to be walking and if we build something people can't get to then to me we're excluding people we're not being inclusive we're being ex you know we're excluding people so i think to, to me one of the keys is the path i'm really curious about the, the look and feel of the fencing, and maybe I, I lack imagination, but um, I guess I, I don't know if we, we have anything on the materials of what it would look like. I just want to make sure that when we do put in this fence that it's not, like, ugly. big and scary. Oh, yeah, that it's not ugly, yeah. That a a five-foot chain-link fence sounds kind of intimidating and, and awful, um, so I just... That's a good point. Maybe we could look at what options what the fence would yeah. look like. I mean, does it need to be that high? Like, if it, you know, the space is contained, and so when you're in there with your dog, you're going to feel like you're in jail. And like, does it? Yeah. So I went and looked at some dog parks, and I have found that the if you just do the chain link that's got the black mm -hmm. vinyl over it, it looks like a whole different ball right. game. Right. That's a more. And, that's a nicer and, look. And I think it's still on the books in Corte Madera that it is actually illegal to install a chain link fence. Mm -hmm. Where it's really you're not residents aren't allowed to do it. Yeah. So if residents aren't allowed to do it, we probably when we do it in the parks, we need to step it up with the nice black and the nice black kind of. Mm -hmm railing on top so that it has a really kind of an clean and 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 does super it need nice to be look. five feet high i was i put that number in there just looking at lots of research about dog parks okay and four could be good enough okay um there's a whole lot of videos on online of especially whippets who can easily jump over a four foot fence mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so five was the height that most dogs aren't going to get over Okay. That's, the, that's what guide dogs use for their to keep their dogs safe. And I, I mean, with kids in the park, I, I just my think, kids are terrified of dogs. I yeah, get so it. I, I just, like it the feels idea like of <laughs> airing on the side <laughs> of just you know keeping the kids safe. Yeah. yeah. One other point I'm wondering if I can make. So um, right now, Elaine and I walk this, and uh, 
this area, once you get past about right here, this is really thick and really heavy brush and really good shade. I mean, if you were to put, you know, a couple of park benches right in, in this area and leave this vegetation, mm -hmm. you're going to have great shade there. Mm -hmm. And so I want to really be careful about, you know, get doing anything where we're just suddenly like removing a bunch of vegetation that we don't need to remove because mm -hmm. it's a nice size space <clears throat> now and to keep the shade seems really important. Mm -hmm. I agree. We liked that area. I mean, it's kind of a more natural area. Mm -hmm. I, I hope we don't just clear cut it. I mean, I think I agree. Pat. I think the idea was to clear out under the trees so mm -hmm. that you could right. get under them right. to leave the canopy, essentially. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hope we Good. do that. Right. Good, I like that. Have we talked about a surface yet? Uh, it's wood chips, grass, granite. Um, decomposed granites in the staff report. Decomposed granites. Oh, yeah, so the in terms of um, the best practices and the and the best recommendations for the surfaces um, by far the best thing in terms of uh, the best way to use the space would be uh, synthetic which we're not recommending um, uh, decomposed granite would be a very close second which we're also not recommending um, we're recommending that we we keep the grass um, understanding that uh, it's going to get it's going to disappear. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I think also in terms of how, and the conversation the commission's had about, um, you know, maybe there is a, a month or two uh, break that the dog park gets during its wet months that are able maybe to rehab, just like we do the fields, um, that grass area. Um, so right now, leave it as grass. And um, if there's areas that we feel maybe we're filling in gaps with wood chips in the future, mm -hmm. or possibly, um, but certainly a direction would be to leave it, leave it grass and expect it to, um, the grass to disappear over time for, um, and then hopefully rejuvenate itself, but also um, understand that, you know, it, it's a wet area and, and during the winter months we would see that um, get muddy, obviously. Okay. And just to make sure that I have this clear on the upper, on this part up here, this curve mm -hmm. up there, that, because Emily mentioned this before, I just want to make sure the fence is on the up, upward side of that slope. It does not come down to the path. I think it's okay for that. Um, we talked about moving it up to the, uh, to moving it up on the upward to side the, of the slope. To the tree line, to the, the berm, to the, like the, to the berm line? The berm, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Correct. I just want to make sure. Yeah. So the question, so what do we recommend to town council? Because we have a package of a lot of information. Right, so I mean, again, this is the, the, the point being that the commission is comfortable with the conversations up to this point that feel the, the community has been, um, we also to, to really quickly bring um, brief attention to uh, the notice that went out. Um, Rebecca was able, we got a, uh, a notice out to the public that this will be heard at the commission on um, Tuesday, October 1st. Um, so we are, um, want to make sure that the commission is overly satisfied with the information they've received, that the community has been heard, that all your um, concerns have been addressed, and that um, the commission is comfortable making a recommendation, uh, their final recommendation to uh, town council uh, to move forward with, um, at the very least, phase one of this dog park, if not the ultimate vision of having... Um, and again, to clarify, phase one consists of? Um, the fence. A, a, a fence, yeah, a fence, <laughs> some minor features um, in the, sorry, I'll get back to the staff report really quickly. Um, so does that mean we need to go back to county council at some future date, sitting there saying this is what we want for phase two, as these phases come up? Um, we can we can look at it as, as an overall package and, and agree that this is ultimately what the commission wants, and then um, add items uh, for consideration in the budget. Um, and have the plan already set in place, so we wouldn't necessarily need to. I mean, it would be going back to the council for budgetary reasons, not anything more than, you know, a, a not, we wouldn't need to adjust the plan at all, uh, unless the commission felt strongly that they needed to. But um, sorry, I just want to get to very quickly. Um, so if we're going to go to all four phases, I would just ask that we we address the the questions around the aesthetics and how much vegetation we're gonna cut through, and if that means we're only recommending nine parking spaces instead of 18, that we make those adjustments before it goes to town council if we're going all the way to that. If we're just recommending phase one and one fence, then um, I'll just make sure we have a pretty fence, but um, if, we're, if we're recommending 
I'm not. I'm sure I'm comfortable with recommending 18 parking spaces and taking out all that vegetation for given the fact that this hill that's green is going to be brown and kind of that sparseness. I just. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I feel like if we're going to put in parking, which is desperately needed in that area, now's the time to do it. And if we put in parking but replant to make up for it, that to me seems like the best balance. So here's the thing. Um, in a perfect world, <laughs> phase one would be the fence, the parking, and the path. <laughs> yeah. well, we've only got $50,000. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm, being, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to be realistic. I don't know how, how doable that is. And I don't know if, again, I'm just throwing this out there. I don't know if phase one is the dog park, phase two is the path, and phase three is the parking. I, 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 I'm not sure how to tee it up. I don't know at what point in time, I'll be honest with you, we should get to a small dog park because we have one we may want to try it to just to see how it works mm -hmm. and not rush the second one. Mm -hmm. and, the, and like the comment that was made before, you know, if the school does have the ability to build on that east field and there's a dog park, a smaller dog park here, we just, all this green space just went away. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if that could be for a later phase. So, and I think part of the time, I'm sorry, I think part of the timeline is this is supposed to go to town council October 1st. October 1st. It's, go October it's going 1st. to council October 1st. So, yeah. so maybe that's what we do is we uh, just recommend, we, we, we send to the town council phase one. We're happy with the plans for phase one, provided it has an attractive fence and whatever other. And then when it comes time to look at these other phases, we would like to revisit those and have it come back to the Parks and Rec before they approve the whole thing. Okay, and then we can go back for them for budget sitting there saying, we want to budget another um, capital improvement project, which is parking, path, whatever it is, and right. do it at that. Okay. I think, I, think, I think that's a way to keep some of the control of it in, with us. Yeah, I, I don't imagine the parking's going to be a park and recs um, issue either. Maybe it, we, we might say we want to limit it to a certain size, but when it comes to budget and it comes to doing it, I don't think we're going to be involved at all. I think it's going to be... Um, public planning works. public works and yeah. doing it so so we if we want to have input on how much we want to save for the park and not give up we should do that but I don't think, think we need to worry about actually planning for the parking I'd, I'd like if, if there is a way to include the path in phase one um, I just feel like the path is really important for access. Mm -hmm. The gate, the um, gate at the, Park Madera, yeah. you mean? Uh, yes. That it's op that there is that, an, that there's open, an I agree that there, should be in phase because one. Because people are going to may end up being confused, and you have to go all the way around, and it's not very we'll convenient. If we could just have access on on both sides. Um, also, one comment about the the closing for the winter. The the small amount of um, feedback that I've gotten um, about that is that the winter is is a really important time for people who have dogs and that don't have their like a, a yard for them to run in or th that that's anyway if there's a way that we can s consider that going forward mm -hmm. that uh, to find a way either either on the higher area where it won't be flooded and wet or some way to keep the park open or drier um, I took the liberty yeah. of putting a potential French drain in the big dog park because it does get really soggy. Mm -hmm. But if you just dug a couple channels and filled them with gravel and drain water out of there, it might be good enough for the winter. So yeah, and I, I think it's one of those things we're not going to know until it happens. Right. Um, right. You know, until we see how much use it gets and totally oh, heavy rain. Sure. You know, I don't take my dog out in the rain. I take her to the village and walk her there because there's the overhangs. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, we really this? don't know until. It so, happens. So we'll Are these figures in the, the town council packet already? Uh, no, they'd be, they'd be going in okay. this week. Because I heard some talk about wanting to potentially adjust the boundaries of where the, uh, the fence line would be. So mm -hmm. I just drew this up in Google Earth. So if we don't want to send these figures and you have edits for me, we can update and you them. want something pulled away from a certain area, um, tell me soon and I can edit it before it goes into the I, final. I, I think the two things is, I think, and again, I can't tell by this. Um, there needs to be a four foot buffer off the path. And then I put the, it at about three right there. It's a six foot path, so I just made it half of that. So we can make it a little bit more. Okay. And then the other thing was, again, okay, on this upward curve, when you walk in there, it slopes up. Yeah. The thought was not to put it four feet off the path, 
but to move that fence up so it's on the upward side of the slope. So it's on the crest, essentially. Right? So Correct. it's like a flatter, yeah. so the surface As long as it flat. still looks nice. Yeah. And the way it's drawn here on the west side where the parking lot is, it's basically drawn right at the edge of the parking lot, which is a steep slope up. So the entire west side would be on the crest of that slope, essentially, the fence. But it's not just that turn, it's that entire west side if there's a hill there. I think we were just looking at the one where you walk into the park. Yeah. So when you walk in the park, you make the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we just, we just looked at that one, moving that up slope. Or, or to the crest. Mm -hmm. okay. the I like your think terminology about better. <laughs> if that berm is three feet high and you put a four foot fence on top of it, when you're on the path, that fence is now seven feet up. It's going to make it look even bigger. I mean, it just might be worth walking out there and trying to envision what that would look like. With Maybe like splitting the difference a little bit. Literally. Yeah. 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 Well, because that's a good point. Do it. Mm -hmm. So, when's our date when we wouldn't have this? prepared and ready to, I, I think it sounds like we can do a vote that we're willing to move forward with this, Close but enough. as far as the figures themselves, what's our date to finalize them? Um, I, sorry, I need to have um, a final draft uh, to Todd and Rebecca by Wednesday. I mean, I think we're, we're all comfortable with going ahead, but maybe we just, it's just like we did with the basketball court. We meet with DPW mm -hmm. we're, and we go and get involved with fence placement. I don't think that needs to hold up going to Just say we'd like to be involved in the process of finalizing. Yeah. Fence placement and right. fence exactly. selection. Yeah, exactly. You know? and, and just for and the, the other thing too. Uh, and just for council education, that's what Emily did more than I did, but there's a couple times we actually sat, sat down with um, Public Works before the basketball court was built and they had schematics sitting there saying, okay, here's what it looks like. And we sat down with the guys who like kind of spearheaded that project. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting down with them figuring, okay, what does this look like? Can we get three courts in here, two courts. Mm -hmm. So I think what Nate is saying and Emily, it's the same type process yeah. where it's here's easy. the concept, here's what we're looking at. We just may refine it a little bit more. We want to okay. and, yeah. and the other thing we should request is that the it comes back to us to consider and propose rules for the park. Because one of the things yeah. that's gonna really wear it down and ruin the park is if we get these people who have 12 dogs, dogs or 10 dogs. So. I think it's going to have to be like three dogs per person maximum so that we don't end up with it turning into right. you know, a commercial dog walker's paradise to they can bring 12 dogs or something and let them run around because they'll just destroy it, right? For, so, for it, if I may, I, just, I, I wanted to say, yeah, because there was a very specific conversation that we had about today's meeting regarding the rules. And um, so the, the one immediate overview is uh, to understand um, the sort of general operational hours of the park. Um, and uh, staff would recommend that in the, in the short term that we're looking at mirroring the general park hours, which are dawn to dusk, um, and recommend to the commission that we absolutely would need to um, come up with a set of rules. Uh, we started looking at some other dog park rules in the area. Um, and for the commission to consider and finalize. There are uh, potentially some ordinance amendments that need to be made, um, which is fine, um, but we would need to do that through um, a little bit of a process. So, but absolutely, um, something that is absolutely important that we need to do. Okay. And um, Todd could probably do this. Check the ordinance that we passed about dogs can be in the park on leash, because I think when that ordinance was passed, I think there's, per there's verbiage in there where you can use it, they can, town council can use a resolution to amend that ordinance. I don't know how, what it, if it needs to go through a formal, formal process. Because theoretically right now, if we built this park and we don't change that ordinance, all those dogs are illegal because <laughs> they have to be on leash. <laughs> right, and, that, and the point being that we, yeah, we'd, make, we'd right. make adjustments but, to that. But again, I think it's, it may be a different process than having to cycle through two town council meetings for an ordinance. Because again, I think there's verbiage in there saying they can change that ordinance by res by doing by simple, resolution, correct? By yes. simple resolution. Yes. I, think okay. that's, I think that's true. So if I have this right, it sounds like we can recommend to town council to do phase one, which would include the big dog park and the pathway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can, can we also include just some budget items for more like doggy, um, like poop bags? place throughout the park as part of this. You might be able to get the beautification committee to do that for okay. free. That's what they did on the pathways. Yeah, throughout the dog park I, I, or throughout I, the park itself? I, I, Either or both. I just didn't know if this was part of a budget process that we wanted. That It's not a line item in here that for like a trash can and a poop, poop bag. The little post. Yeah, the dispensers. Yeah, 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 like whatever so, we need to. So, like, 
And Alden's looking at the, the list of bulleted items, mm -hmm. of, of cost items, and this is just the high-end stuff that I put in there. Okay, there's more. And when I was talking to um, town manager Cusimano, um, he basically said, well, perhaps we can do this without going to an outside consultant and spending a lot of money on that. And I said, sure, I'll do these drawings and just put some high-end mm -hmm. line items of things that you might consider. And this is for DPW to look at so they could cost out how much the fence might cost. But for the other stuff, this There's isn't meant to, to come. Okay. not meant to be exhaustive okay. right, right there. Before we do that, I'll, can I, I'll open up for public comment. No comments? Okay, I'll close public comment. Okay, so it looks like, again, let me correct me if I'm incorrect. Um, we're we're going to um, recommend to town council that we've received all the information we have or that's necessary to go ahead and proceed with the dog park. Phase one would include what's entitled the big dog park. And then we also want the pathway included in phase one. Is that correct? Or at the very least, a gate. Okay, okay and at the very least, a gate. The only problem with that is I don't know about ADA access. Pathway. I don't know how that works. The, the, bu the budget and the plan would um, include amendments to or any adjustments that would need to be made for ADA. That's part of that's part of okay, the Okay, so we are looking at a pathway yes, then. Absolutely. Yeah. A real one. Okay. Is that good then? Okay, and then I don't know how to word it this way, but I guess any details um, I guess would they leave it up to us to work it out with public works? In other um, words like we can we can sorry, we can certainly request that um, the commission um, be instrumental in finalizing the details of the plans with uh, town staff. Okay, and when I say details, I don't mean significantly changing this. I mean, you know, can making we move sure the fence up here. Right. Yeah. What does that look like? Like Sarah's saying, what does it look like if you're up, you know, on the crest of a slope that's five feet up and you put a five foot fence up there? What's that going to look like? Um, it's details like that, or like the doggy post bags with the garbage cans. And I assume also that public works will be in charge of like cleaning out garbage cans and stuff like that, right? <laughs> more for Correct. Do okay. That. Do we need a formal vote then? Yes. Wait, wait. Okay. Can I just ask one more question? Go ahead. I'm no, so fine. sorry. Can you can you just pull up the map where it showed where the fence line was going to be? Okay. So when the fence, this is the phase one. So this is my concern from walking back there that if you just need to speak in the mic. It's almost impossible to put a fence in here right now because this is so overgrown. There, there so, is a fence already there. There is a fence. So, so this is so. So nothing's to stop a dog from. This is actually a, a slope down, right? This is a big. You're up high here, it's, it's, and then to get down here, it's actually. Just on the west side. Down. On the east side, it's a little flatter. It's about it's like one third. It's, it's about one third, two thirds. About one third on the left hand side of the map. On the west side of the map, it's it, there's a berm, and then once you okay. get to the right of it, there's a slope, and it's actually pretty flat. I just have a hard time of how this is going to work to actually confine the dogs into a reasonable space. Like if I have a dog that's going to run off into the woods, and I'm up in here. And that dog decides to go down in here. I don't know how I'm going to get him back. So I, to me, it, it just, I just can't visualize how that fence would work. And I just, I want to say that and leave it up to you to make sure that it would work. I, I think two things. I think one thing is it's something that it'll be a public works thing, and I'm sure it'll get figured it'll figure out. It out yeah. And the other part, I think it's something Sarah was saying, and that is if you cut some of that underbrush, okay, that'll open that up a little, not a lot, okay. still leave some kind of green canopy. Your dog goes running down there. It's not like hopefully it's running into the bush. Yeah. It's more like running. It should be somewhat Under open. A tree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll rest easy and know it's in good hands. Okay. So with that, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we go ahead and recommend to town council that we move forward with the dog park um, to include phase one, which phase one would include what we're calling the big dog park and also the pathway. Can you also in that motion make a reference to the location of the dog park? Town Park. <laughs> Behind Cafe. I, identifying the, the, um, the property uh, just north of the Park Madera Center. Okay, it's the um, area north of Park Madera Shopping Center. Which is located at 510 Tamil Pius Drive. Which is located at 510 Tamil Pius Drive. And just for PR standpoint. Uh, ho hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, no, hold all on. Right. Is there a second to all the second. second. Okay, is there any discussion? Okay, sorry. I, I just think you should not say we're going to proceed with the big dog park and not the small dog park. That will offend people with small dogs. I think you should just say we want to do the main dog park fencing. 
or the primary or whatever. Okay. Don't call it big dog, small dog, because I think it's just going to create. Why are they building a big dog park and not a small dog it's park? Why is that a park? So, so, just say it's a dog park. So I have a question based upon that, because if this drawing goes to town council and it's public, does that mean we should change the verbiage from dog, big dog park to main dog, dog park, park, park and phase one, or phase one, phase one, phase one dog and change park. small dog park to phase two, phase, phase two, maybe pa phase or two parentheses small dog or whatever potential small second dog park, park. or just pot potential second dog auxiliary park. dog park. So I can make all those edits and I'll put the phases. So there's so I'll show phase one, phase two, phase one dog park, phase. You may want to call it something else besides phase two, just in case something happens. Um, I don't know what you can call it. I don't know if you call it auxiliary. I mean, the only primary. phase we're really talking about that we're recommending is the path and the western yeah. dog park. So, so that's the only else. real phase we have. Everything else is proposed Maybe or western. Or Maybe, Maybe western, western, eastern. Yeah. Western portion or western. In the eastern portion. But there's what we're recommending and then there's other stuff. So okay. we'll just make sure that that's clear in the diagram. Can we tell everyone that the west side is for west side dogs and the east <laughs> <laughs> That's discrimination. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Okay, go and call for the vote. Uh, Commissioner Ravazio? Aye. Commissioner Phipps? Yes. Commissioner Elson? Yes. Commissioner Miles? Yes. Commissioner Blomgren? Yes. I'll note that Commissioner Weingrout is absent at the moment. Uh, Vice Chair Janowski? Yes. And Chair Casiso? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for the hard work. Thanks, Nate, for putting all this together. Yes, thank good you very job. much. Good job. Really good. Okay, moving to 5D discussion, update to Park and Rec Commission wish list. Wish list. Yeah, so. Um, you didn't, you didn't find the old wish list yeah, put in the oh, it's here. It's here. It's on the oh, I didn't page. see it. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Don't you do want to talk about these? <laughs> um, this is the wish list that we updated. Um, we've updated several times. Uh, most recently, I believe it was uh, April that we took a look at this. Um, but as uh, the town manager indicated, you know, in terms of the phasing, in terms of how, or not phasing, um, budget cycles and how we would have opportunity to update things. Um, this is the um, current wish list that we've been working off of. Um, obviously there's certain things that have been canceled, completed, that are in process, um, and uh, we can now um, change dog park or add dog park and put um, in process as well. Um, so. This is for us to have a conversation, consider, um, refresh, and uh, look at um, interest in tackling um, any of these items um, for a mid-year budget review, um, or also recommend for, and, and this wouldn't be the final opportunity to do this. This is just to, to stimulate the conversation of, of the wish list itself. So, um, but in terms of priorities and things that we wanna look at, um, for the upcoming um, break in the fiscal year. And if there's something that we want to move forward uh, with trying to see if it's possible, then I think we should have a good discussion about it. So just clarify two points. One point is, is there anything anybody wants to add to the wish list? And again, that's what it is. It's just wishful thinking. No, it's a wish list. Um, and then that the second part is, is that, is there any project on here that we want to get bumped up in the sense that I think there's a mid-year review of capital improvement projects, October or November. So right now, something may not be in budget, but we can recommend that we get it in budget. So it would be done theoretically um, this fiscal year versus extending it out until 2020-21. Um, I, would, I would advocate for renovating the bathrooms at Town Park, mm -hmm. please, whatever it takes to do that as kind of A number one. Um, reopening that space um, that looks like it used to be a um, kind of concession stand of some sort, um, kind of figuring out how to make use of that that's attached to the bathrooms. Um, and then putting in something underneath the fancy shade that we put in the playground to actually make that not just a big shaded sand dust bowl, whether it's benches or something, play structure or something underneath there. Didn't we talk about doing like a, a um, adult size picnic table or something or is that something to make use of the space yeah. i mean it's it's kind of shaded now but it's not it's just not, not being functional. leveraged it's like it kind of feels like we kind of halfway did something mm. um mm -hmm. on the topic of bathrooms how about some towards the side of the dog park 
right, a bathroom on that side. Um, a second bathroom at Cafe Verde? What? <laughs> a second bathroom so at Cafe Verde? This is kind of like on Town Park <laughs> oh, master no. plan. So, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of overlap. Um, but um, my, uh, aside from that, um, I just imagine being over the dog park and then needing to go to the bathroom. So what do you do? I guess it's have Cafe Verde. <laughs> but um, the tennis court lights uh, are high on my uh, wish list. Um, they've been... Um, on the list for a long time now and I know this last year we really had a lot of problems with them not working or some of them working uh, people complaining you know and as it gets dark earlier now people getting off work and wanting to play tennis um, there's really it's not well lighted so that would be at the top for me well, and uh, people leaving Twin Cities in the winter months are relying on the tennis court lights mm -hmm. to be able to see where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that path is underwater if it rains at all. So if there's any way to kind of improve that path for the people, it's a heavily, you know, heavily walked piece of the park. Um, and in the winter months, it's fairly treacherous. I end up up kids and chucking them over puddles in the dark and <laughs> that one says pathway lighting partially done so is that is are those the uh paths? not at that location though we did we did some pathway lighting um along the um north end of the community center mm -hmm. are you talking okay. about lighting or are you talking about actually the path having to be both, both. Re yeah okay. yeah it needs both the path so, so i guess and re so pay repaving or something like that yeah, there's a couple true. of low spots there's some roots and things on that main path that goes along Tamalpais that should be taken care of, I think, from the library. I have just a couple. Go ahead. One is um, Bayside Dog Park and Bayside Basketball Court. Just because uh, the Bayside keeps getting, you know, I mean, the back and forth. And that's what actually Jim brought over were some suggestions he had for where would be good places to put dog parks on the bayside and he just brought them over because he would really like to see that happen and he is the mayor so i'm not just doing his bidding though i think we really should do something on the bayside and also um i'd love to see some kind of water element in the playground for the summertime there's uh the, up at kaiser i don't know if you guys have been up to the kaiser park where it's just this little thing where this water squirts out of the ground and when it's hot it's really nice for there to be some kind of small you can't drown in it because the water just goes back into the you know it just recirculates um but that's like you know that may be a little pie in the sky for Corda Madera. i don't know well, one thing on bayside park i think maybe in a month or so i think we can talk about that more i think we're trying to get through the dog park Right, I'm just first. saying this is the wish, wish list, list. Movie. Right, yeah. right, and right, right, right. for us i right. think to have it on here could, could, because the bayside feels Neglected sometimes well, when everything happens over here. I, I actually think what we should look at is doing community. I'm getting ahead of myself. A wish list plus or minus is doing a community meeting over the, uh, on that side, almost creating like another mini, like a skunk hollow type thing, because mm -hmm. there's space for it over there that's far enough away from the homes. Um, a dog park at Skunk Hollow? No, no, no. At Bayside, where Bayside Park is. Oh yeah, yeah. Not just a dog park, right. but also that's creating. Yeah. I call it a skunk hollow where it's a mini park. I see. With swings yeah, and they, yeah. stuff like cool. that. Cool. Even better. And I, my my big next one after Artificial the basketball <laughs> courts is the um, turf for Eastfield, and it's on here. But we've been working on that for five years, and um, I really hope we can keep making progress. I know we're working with the school, but it's a little too slow for my taste. I've got two more. Um, we need to rehab the park. Ben the, the benches and tables, they're almost unusable. Um, and resurfacing um, and fixing up the backboards, the tennis backboards, that's a great space for playing. It's the, right next to the skate park, the, those, that's the big backboard and it's like a paved place, but it's all cracked up so it's not really functional as a tennis backboard. Sorry, I just clarified the wall itself or the, 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 the surface? surface okay, the surface, the ground, the, the wall's not great either, um, but the whole space could be used for one for as a tennis backboard, a lacrosse backboard, because um, the ones at Neil Cummins are pretty chintzy. Um, but if we surface it nicely, it could be a place for outdoor gym classes, outdoor yoga. Like it's nice and shaded. Like that's if this space was better rehab, it could be more functional for more things. 
Anything else? Okay, so we got all that stuff for the wish list. Now the next question is, is there anything we want to go to um, town, town council with and bump something up so it gets done, I'll say within the next six or seven months, plus or minus? Otherwise, all this stuff is just wish. It's wishes. I mean, some of these seem like park maintenance. Like to me, I mean, you know, a dog park on the bayside, a new hoops court. Those are a little bit more labor intensive. Right. We've got to get input. We've got to do planning. But I mean, we have money. Like I mean, if we if our picnic tables, you know, I mean, that can't be that expensive. To I mean, yeah. those feel like little things that are easy fixes that are high impact to me. I don't know why and we're I feel not like getting the that bathrooms stuff done. would be the most Paving, expensive the, one. The figuring out of the pathways because here we are repaving all our roads. We're doing great things for the cars, and then anything that's for bikes or pedestrians, it's just there's no money going into it. Mm -hmm. I'd put, I'd bump that one up. Mm -hmm. You know, fixing the the, the pathways so that they're safe, accessible, and not embarrassing. I'd say the bathrooms, like we yeah, the, bathrooms. the bathrooms, the bathrooms. Those are really expensive, high. though. It, those are expensive, but they're the, some of it's maintenance. Yeah. Like it'd be nice to have soap in the soap dispenser. Um, but and some of it's you know making sure the floors are clean. But I think that we could do some things that aren't don't have to be hugely expensive. Mm -hmm. But we have running water in there. We've got flushable toilets. Let's make it a place that people actually use. Mm -hmm. yeah, how about those three things: the picnic tables, the pathways, and the bathroom? Mm -hmm. That would make a huge improvement. Mm -hmm. in the park. Okay, I'm just throwing this out there. If we have to prioritize those three. Like one, two, and three. I mean, I'll let someone else do that. <laughs> bathrooms, bathrooms and paths. Please. Sorry, picnic, um, picnic tables, pathways, and what was it? Bathrooms. Bathrooms. It was bathrooms. 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 So if we have to prioritize ba bathrooms, pathways, picnic tables. I mean, they I'll are go in that order. Yeah. Yeah. They okay. are only bathroom or only non porta potties in the in the park. Has DPW done any study of the existing bathroom structure? Is it fine, other than not being super clean and enjoyable? Is the structure uh, okay? I mean, it's the concrete not, structure. It's not something that needs to be rebuilt. No, um, there are some pretty attractive, you know, sort of modular, kind of drop-in-place type bathroom facilities that are available. I mean, uh, Piper Park has some. So does Redwood at our field, yeah, and Redwood it's has really some nice. Too. It's nice, clean. So. I use those. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> um, I, I just want to make sure I'm, under, I'm, I'm. When we're talking about bathrooms, we're talking about upgrading the current bathrooms or are we talking about adding bathrooms by the playground itself just at, talking about upgrading the current okay. bathrooms <clears throat> i think adding bathrooms sh i mean not immediate but that should be high on the list of something we try to get done in the, park. That, the i think maybe we do that as part of the master yeah yeah so but for now trying to get the ones the only ones we have so, so that they're decent i mean if you get within 20 feet of them you can smell them you know it's not good. And one thing I know they're costly if we had to put in permanent bathrooms, and I know people are not hot on porta potties, but I think a couple of weeks ago I was at Chase Center. Uh, they have a huge, they have a plaza on the outside on one part of it, um, and they were doing a whole thing with Chase and all this other stuff. But they actually had portable bathrooms, but you could not tell because they had green screening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you looked at that building, you didn't even know there was bathrooms there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just throwing that out because, again, if it's something for dog park, or over by the kids' playground. If it's somewhere we can't get them in permanent, the next uh, next alternative may be is to put green screening so at least they look nice. Mm -hmm. There's lots of ways to disguise them. I've seen those. I've seen the honey pots actually put inside of what looks like an old-fashioned outhouse. Mm -hmm. It literally says outhouse, and it's a barn door, and it looks like it blends in. And then you open it, and it's actually just a portage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so um, do we need motion then? Um, if you could motion uh, direct staff to update the commissioner wish list and um, prioritize the projects identified, bathrooms, pathways, and picnic uh, tables and benches. Um, and I'd like to bring it back to the commission at one of the next two meetings to continue the discussions on. You need to check with Todd because if we try to do this mid-year, I don't know when that goes to town council. Sure, absolutely. So if it goes November, in November um, we talk about it next month. We're, yeah, but yeah. We're, he has to be aware that we're looking at getting these three projects put in the capital improvement in that process with public works. Yeah, I definitely would like to meet with the executive advisory committee about, about those items and, and see how we can move those forward. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sorry, do we need a motion? Or no, we're good. Uh, direct no. staff to update the commission wish list and bring it back at um, a future meeting. Okay, so moved. Great. <laughs> and I'm sorry, should I open up for public comment? Any? No? Okay, thanks. 
Okay, uh, 5E approval of August 26 meeting minutes. Everybody get a chance to read the minutes. Any changes, corrections, additions? Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Thanks. Any discussion? Okay, call for the vote. Commissioner Vazio? Uh, I'll abstain since I wasn't you here. here. Okay, so. that's right. Commissioner Phipps? Yes. Commissioner Elson? Yes. Commissioner Miles? Abstaining. Commissioner Blomgren? Yes. I'll note that Commissioner Weingart's not here. Vice Chair Janowski? Yes. And Chair Casisa? Yes. Director's reports. Great. I um, want to just uh, update the commission on, on a few things. Um, on the basketball courts uh, that we are remodeling at uh, Town Park. Um, as you all know that the, the concrete was poured um, at the end of August and we are uh, awaiting the surfacing that's going to be happening. Uh, we did get the basketball um, backboards and hoops delivered last week. Um, there was a minor challenge with the posts, uh, which did not arrive, so those are being tracked down. Um, and the plan uh, that mm -hmm. our contractor has is to start the um, resurfacing, the final resurfacing on October 7th. It'll take about two to three days. Um, I'm sorry, uh, on October 7th, installing the equipment, which take about two or three days. The surfacing will take about a week. Um, and then after that, uh, once that's dried, the striping, which will take a couple of days. So within um, two weeks of October 7th, we should have our final basketball court uh, ready for its grand opening. Wonderful. Looking forward to that. Um, I want to let you know very briefly about the office remodel. Um, we're finalizing plans with the building inspector, and we expect uh, that was expected to go to the council at their second meeting in September, um, and we're looking at uh, hopefully finalizing that for the second meeting in October. Um, and we'll keep you updated on that. Um, Chili Cook-Off went really well. We had a great attendance. It was a lot of fun. That was on September 8th, which was also opening day of soccer. Uh, so it was a busy day, um, but it was a great turnout. We had two different bands. It was really popular. Um, I had a good time. And um, we actually did a, um, we had uh, three judges, um, local judges, and then we also did a, a uh, um, People's Choice Award that we did uh, via an online voting survey monkey, which um, got over 120 responses, which I thought was very impressive for um, just an on-site mobile, you know, question of one through 12, which worked really great. So, Who won? Um, I, you know, I, I have the names for you. I, they were going to be posted on the website, but we'll have that up this week. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I can remember, second place. Um, was Steve Hoffmeyer, if I, if I remember correctly, is, is the name I remember. Really? Yeah, um, which who was also a last minute entry too, which was kind of funny. Um, want to very briefly update you on the Skunk Hollow remodel update. Um, so um, I, I want to uh, bring this um, possibly on the agenda for the, I, I'd like to have it on the agenda for the October meeting um, for further discussion. Um, we have met a little bit of resistance, uh, resistance maybe isn't the word, but um, in terms of response on how to update the conceptual plans from um, our current vendor and we'd like to have discussions on how to maybe um, reach out to a broader network of vendors to have some better conceptual drawings to finalize and synthesize um, the thoughts of the amenities itself the the, the part not not the picnic tables and benches and um, grass area etc but just based on the just the playground itself so um, I'll be having that discussion with the commission at the October meeting on how and have some uh, more conceptual drawings for you is the is the goal from different vendors. So I'm confused. The vendor you have now, we're, we're not using them now. I'm not saying that we're not using them. I'm just saying that I, we instead of f focusing on them, we you certainly can use them. That's not a, not it's not to say that we can't, but um, we we'll, want we'll to reach out to some other vendors to be able to um, get some other options since we um, have not heard back from them on. Um, updating the current conceptual drawings. So we have no drawings from them, it's been five or six months? Not uh, not updated drawings um, in the past two or three months, no. So, so you why? Them how long sorry, hold on. Um, we've requested them, um, I have to see, I, I. Like April, when we, uh, after we had our meetings? They had, we, we I'd have to look, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but the last um, communication we had was in the last few weeks. Um, about how to move forward and they weren't comfortable updating those drawings at that time. Okay, I just find, I'm gonna blow so I have to keep, <laughs> take a deep breath. I find this whole thing frustrating, Mario, and I find it unacceptable, okay? We had a community meeting in March, or in April, I believe. We went to staff at that meeting 
and we were told we'd have conceptual drawings by August or September. That's five or six months ago. We don't have any. And now you're telling us we need to go to a different vendor. And this is just coming up now. And there's a three month gap that you didn't even hear from the vendor. I don't find, I find the whole, it totally unacceptable. I don't see planning commission, Pat's been around a lot longer than I have. I don't see planning commission getting pushed back, flood commission. I don't see town council, I don't see them having these problems. So I don't understand why we're having these problems. We made represent, representations to the public that we we're gonna have conceptual drawings in September and we don't have them. And this is the first we're hearing that you have to go to a different vendor. So. Understood. Uh, okay. It's beyond being understood though, okay? I know you get it, but it's beyond that because this is not the first time it's happened with us. And to me, it's being disrespectful to us as a commission. And I think a lot of us are starting to get frustrated with this process because what's gonna happen now is we won't get them in October because we're gonna have a discussion. We won't get them until January. The whole thing will just keep getting pushed back. Meanwhile, you have public that's interested in this project that they're gonna lose interest on. You have people showing up and they're wasting their time. So it's not just us, it's the public. You have the town's reputation at risk, okay? And it's getting to the point where it's getting totally outrageous. So what I wanna see it at our next meeting is, you need to come with us with the written staff report explaining what the root of the problem is, why these things can't get done, and why they're not getting done. And you need to come up with solutions. And if you're coming back, and you better have everything documented, you can work with Todd if you want to, but if you're coming back saying that the root of the problem is staff, okay, then you better be prepared to say that the town is not providing these resources or staff, if that's what you're gonna tell us, because I don't know what you're gonna tell us. But to sit here with the vendor and say you haven't heard from them, and I would assume you didn't contact them, and as far as I know, they're a reputable vendor, and now at the 11th hour to go, we're gonna change vendors, to me it's not acceptable at all, at all. And again, I don't think we're getting the respect we deserve as a commission, because again, it doesn't happen with town council, it doesn't happen with other commissions. I don't see Adam going to the planning commission going, oh, by the way, that remodel that was supposed to come up tonight, I didn't get a chance to do it, so it's gonna be shoved back three months. I don't see that happening. So we're gonna start, we're, I think as a commission, we for a long time have just accepted that this is the way it is. And I think to me, the acceptance, we're at a low point that we've ever been before. So I think moving forward, we just need to be more proactive when these issues come up. And this is only the iceberg, there's other issues. I know I had one council member, she emailed me saying, oh, how come we don't get packages earlier than a Friday? I respond back saying, this has come up before, and I, that'll be the other one. You can have another staff report explaining why staff reports or our packages go out on a Friday before a Monday meeting, and why you can't have them ready on a Wednesday or a Thursday. And I don't mean to be upset, but I think right now, our expectations are so low of staff that it's unbelievable. That, that to sit here for a vendor and go, I haven't heard from them for three months, and that's the excuse. I mean, I don't, does Public Works do that? Does Public Works contact tracked out with somebody to do work and go, oh, that work's getting pushed back six months because we never contacted them, or they never contacted us? And now you're saying we need to go to a different vendor. And again, I know, I know the game. The game is we'll talk about in October, we'll talk about in November, then finally like December or January, if we're lucky, something will happen. It's not acceptable anymore. So you need the two staff reports, and again, you need to determine what the root cause of the problem is, whether that be staffing, if staff can't handle it, whatever it is, and what the solutions are. And then I think what we need to do is be more proactive, and either we start making recommendations to town council, or we make recommendations to town manager. Because I think it's just gotten out of control. And it's been going on for a number of years. And I think enough is enough. OK, I, I'll, I'll make um, all those notes. I have them for, for staff reports for the October meeting. And uh, I will uh, work with uh, the executive advisory committee. And we'll identify all the issues, make sure that they're brought to light, put them in staff reports, and uh, plan on having uh, conceptual drawings for you uh, at the October meeting as described. Okay, and again, those staff reports need to have solutions, okay? Because I don't want to sit here and have, we're gonna be doing bocce ball courts and find out that we need conceptual drawings and that project gets moved back. The only one I know that will move forward is a dog park and that's because you have council members taking interest in it and you also have town council or uh, the town manager that I emailed saying, can you expedite the process? which after I sent that email within, I think, two days, he put the fences were up. 
So that was expedited through him. But it's getting to the point more where it's not getting, it's not acceptable. It, it just isn't. And I shouldn't say this, but this, I know how government works because I used to work for the government. But if it was private sector, it wouldn't be tolerated at all. And again, I know we're not in the private sector, we're in the government sector. So with that, I don't know if anybody has any comments on Mario's reports or anything. Yeah, I think the frustration is just when we've had projects over the years that are not getting done, and then I think we thought the solution was going to be DPW was going to take over project managing because the shade structure, the original skunk hollow repairs, the you know resurfacing of the tennis courts, the basketball court, I mean, the skate park, we just, it feels like everything takes three times to four times longer than it feels like it would need to. And then we do have these like procedural delays, but then yet if we email Todd, it just gets done the next day. So there's really a disconnect. Like if we escalate something, it gets done, but this is not a very functional way to us to be able to work through the process. I mean, the, the East Field is a good example. Like, are we working with the school district on funding? Are we not? I mean, there just feels like there's just a black hole around, you know, when can we actually expect things to get done? And then when we get that date, usually it's six months later at the best, best case, if even that. Any other comments, questions? No? Okay, uh, anything else, Mario, on your reports? Um... Sorry, uh, no. Okay, commission reports, September Town Council update, okay. anything? Uh, yes, I- I'm oh, sorry, wait, Maddie, I'm sorry. Maddie. Uh, oh. Let me go ahead and open up for public comment, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, you can just state, you've been through the state name, address. <laughs> you may have to lower the mic. Yes, always. <laughs> Maddie Morgan, Madero Presidio. Um, I was just curious, I think, a couple months ago, or a month ago, the, after the last meeting, we sent over, or our tot lot committee um, sent over plans that uh, demonstrated what we were doing for the tot lot. I was wondering if you all received that. Yes, um, we you did, did. okay. Because uh, we used a vendor, and I don't know if, uh, after hearing the discussion, I just thought I would share. I think it might be the same vendor, I'm not sure, but uh, the vendor that we used, we contacted them, I believe it was in March or April time frame, and they were able to turn around the drawings rather quickly within a month and a half or so, and then there was a few changes after a couple board meetings, and now we're gonna be breaking ground in the beginning of November. So if that gives you any time frame of how quickly that vendor works, that might help, I'm not sure. So, um, but I was wondering if that was in, looked at in consideration to the plans that you're considering for Skunk Park, because you know, you presented some things that might work in conjunction with Skunk Park. Has that been sort of looked at or spoken about anymore or considered? I don't think so. I think we were waiting for conceptual drawings and then kind of going to take and it from there. And then comparing them. Right. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I think it, yeah. More, okay. You know, I was just more. curious. I just wanted to make sure that you did get them, number one. And number two is the basketball conversation completely off basketball court conversation completely off uh, discussion block? I don't think it's off, off. I can't tell you where it's at, though. And again, there's no guarantees. I know Nate, I think at one of our meetings, did ask for a cost mm -hmm. to see what the cost was, but we never got that information either. Okay, I was just curious where you were. So yeah, again, no guarantees, no promises. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're welcome, thanks. Uh, with that, I'll close public comment. Uh, any town council update from September meeting? Yes, um, I attended the town council meeting and um, kind of in general, there was a um, presentation done on um, fire safety, you know, uh, vegetation abatement. And um, I have to say, you know, that the, the town and the county in general is doing a wonderful job in terms of hoping to pre prepare us for, you know, a fire, fire prevention. Um, that was discussed, um, and um, addition of LED lights in some of our neighborhoods. Those are kind of just general things. Those, uh, some two things pertaining to um, Park and Rec was um, the town council approved the signage at Old Court of Madera Square. So that's all approved and set. And they also voted to repay uh, grant 
monies that were um, had to be paid back to the California Department of uh, Park and Rec because we did not go through the proper bid process. And um, as a result, though, now the Department of Public Works handles all bids, as you were kind of referring to as another issue. But we paid back um, $168,521 uh, and uh, grant not used. Um, and that was... Um, Actually, the money was used, right? Was used illegally or not within? Oh, uh, yeah, Tempor of the temporarily <laughs> used and then repaid. Yeah, <laughs> it was a, it was loan-free money. Right, it was a loan <laughs> or interest-free money. <laughs> okay, uh, executive advisory committee. We didn't meet formally. Emily and I met with Mario just last, for the agenda. Think, yeah, last Tuesday go over the agenda. <laughs> Anything on the IGC programming ad hoc committee? Uh, Rebecca sent out a poll and is trying to get a regularly occurring meeting time set up. And so we're trying to come up with a time where we can all <coughs> set it up once a month and and everybody can make it. Okay. Uh, any individual commissioner updates, reports? Nope. No? Okay. Uh, future agenda items. Um, we're going to have to have a few resolution discussion. Unfortunately, the discussion about the inter intergenerational center the fees i guess it's not a fee it's a donation was omitted from our package so we're gonna have to discuss that at the next meeting and if there's nothing else anybody anything else no. okay then we're adjourned